Hi Shibashish, thank you so much for taking our time and interviewing with us. For the viewers, may we request you to please share your journey and your story in your own words? Yeah, sure. So first of all, thank you for having me. Happy to help any way I can. I'll probably start off uh, from my undergraduation days. So I did my engineering, uh, I did my electrical engineering in IT Kharagpur and graduated back in 2015. Oh, yeah. And after that, I decided to join a CPG company, uh, ITC Limited, worked there for approximately five years, uh, primarily in project management as well as operations. And as I worked there, I got more curious about different other industries as well and kind of uh, was interested in making a broader impact in other industries. Mm -hmm. And I thought at the time that the best way to do that is going to be through uh, the consulting uh, job profile. Right. And I thought the best way to reach that particular goal would be uh, through an MBA. Uh, because essentially it uh, helps you build a certain kind of network and it also uh, imbibes you with decision-making frameworks that are helpful when you're dealing with such uh, broad and ambiguous uh, situations. And that was also the feedback that I got when I was having these conversations with many people who were in those particular fields. Okay. So that's when I decided that, okay, fine, uh, it's time to take the next step of my life. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, chose Yale primarily because uh, the student size in Yale compared to other universities is uh, slightly smaller. Okay. And I thought that given the COVID environment and everything, having a smaller student group is going to be more helpful right. uh, as that would increase the cohesion between team members. Okay. And of course, other than that, it has a really good uh, network group of students who come to Yale uh, every year and yeah overall it has been a fantastic experience. Oh that's amazing. So in your opinion what are a few factors or actions you took that made all the difference? Yeah sure so primarily two things uh, helped me in my process mm -hmm. uh, and when I say process I mean from preparation of GMAT to finally getting the offer. Right. Uh, the first thing, of course, was reaching out to students who are right now studying in those universities, because despite doing all the research uh, on the websites, uh, you might find some nuances, you know, something, something very nuanced about that particular university. Right. But other than that, the information that you see might seem a bit generic because, you know, at the end of the day, they are all MBA schools. So the best way to do research is to reach out to people. And I think that was a very good uh, thing that I think I did because I got to know about several programs and several activities that happen in, 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 these, in this particular B school that I thought that made me more convinced about applying to that school. Okay. And if you're more convinced, automatically that helps with your application process, right? Absolutely. And the second thing I would say is to take help from a professional such as Exports Global. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are so many things uh, that you initially do not know about what it is that a recruiter uh, is looking for. Right. And if you try to find out all of that by yourself, then that is definitely a big time-taking endeavor. And you, of course, lack the experience because, I mean, this, this is the first application that you're doing, right? right. Uh, whereas uh, the consultants here have done that multiple times. They know several things, uh, several frameworks, how to apply them. So that definitely helped me. So I would say these are the two primary things that have helped me in my process. Okay, okay, that's amazing. So with the benefit of hindsight, what are a few mistakes you believe you committed in the process? Yeah, sure. So I think there were there were two primary things, two primary mistakes that I made, and that would be my advice to anyone else who is also thinking about uh, yeah, uh, starting this process. Uh, the first would be... Uh, timing your uh, GMAT preparation and then your application. So okay. I remember when I was going through this process, at some point I was prepping for GMAT and I was also preparing the application simultaneously. All right. uh, that I believe is a big mistake mm -hmm. in my opinion. I would okay. seriously recommend people to first get your GMAT out of the way. Don't even think about the application. First, get your GMAT out of the way. Mm -hmm. Have a minimum acceptable score. Try to reach that. Okay. And once you're done with that, then, mm -hmm. you know, just keep that behind you. You're done with your GMAT and now completely focus on your application. So okay. I, I'd say that that was a mistake that I made because uh, I was not able to juggle both simultaneously. And the second thing, of course, would be um, to time this entire sequence well. All right. uh, 
the best thing to do is to back calculate from your application date. So for example, I think down to approximately this first week of January. Right. Uh, so I would say keep a comfortable one and a half, at least two months okay. for your application preparation because it does take time, mm -hmm. especially if you're from an engineering background such as me, uh, language and literature is not your strong suit particularly, which means that there's going to be several mm -hmm. recursions and divisions. Right? So keep right. a good two months and then back calculate your GMAT preparation sampling. So I would say these are the two mistakes uh, that I made. And that would be also my advice to anyone who are, is planning to do the applications. So. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. It takes a lot of courage to actually accept the kind of mistakes you make and then learn from it. So what would you like to say about your experience and learnings from managing the application timeline? Yes, I think two key things that will be important when it comes to managing the application timeline. First is, of course, uh, selection of schools, uh, because you don't want to take more than you can chew, right? And because these applications, each individual application is almost like a project in itself. That is true. And the second would be being more organized in your approach because you're juggling all of them simultaneously. So I remember when um, I was having this conversation with someone in Experts Global, mm -hmm. when, it comes, when it came to the selection of schools. Now, like any other, I guess, student who comes to uh, Experts Global, people want to apply to like maybe 10 or 15 schools or something like that just to hedge their bets. Uh, I think I had a very good and useful conversation with Achal. Uh, she told me that, look, it's always better to apply to less number of schools. Mm -hmm. And in those schools have like, you know, really good to have safe bets, stuff like that. And since they have done these applications uh, so many times for so many students, they have a good idea as to, okay, based on your profile, what is it that you can manage? And mm -hmm. what is it that is going to be really ambitious? Right. So uh, that was really helpful. Okay. Uh, get a good short list of schools that I need to do, apply to. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, again, the outreach to students will be really helpful because you might be surprised, you know, some universities which might not have been in your list initially might turn out to be really excellent for your profile or your needs. So right. that is one thing. And second thing, of course, when it comes to uh, organizing your entire timeline, mm -hmm. uh, one really good thing about Experts Global was that they have a complete planner for you. Now you can zoom into that planner, expand it based on the overall timeline that is available to you. but following those steps made everything organized and much less complicated so right. yeah these are the two key things when it comes to juggling all the applications okay it's quite interesting so can you tell us more about your interview experience with the b school yeah sure so well when you're doing your applications it's uh, kind of have an idea how the interview or what rather they're going to ask in the interviews they are primarily going to be more behavioral based questions mm -hmm. and uh, so I was never surprised when I went to an, went into an interview. Okay. And um, again, a part of that, of course, is the application. And a part of that is the interview prep that happens when you're uh, in experts. Group. So you're already familiar with the structure. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the interview experience, uh, well, one thing in hindsight that I would say is really important, at least it was important for Yale School of Management, uh, was time management. In interviews, it is possible that, you know, you tend to take one particular answer and, you know, you're adding details uh, to it to the point that it is a really long answer. Uh, but something that people have to keep in mind is that the person in front has 30 minutes hard stop. At least that was the case in you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to reach the point where, you know, you are the one who's asking questions or queries. Uh, it shouldn't be the case that, the person just asked maybe one or two questions and time ran out. So precision, uh, and this is something that I understood, is that being concise and precise is also important in certain places. And the best way to do that is just to have repetition in terms of your practice. Because there will be some standard questions they might ask you. And if you're already, if you've already prepped for it, if you have the key points that you need to touch upon, it's going to go smoothly. All right. That's interesting. So would you like to share more details about your MBA experience so far? Yeah, sure. So uh, one of the key things that I personally was looking for from the MBA experience, since it's a professional degree, it's not like an uh, engineering degree, which means that the people with whom you would be studying, with whom you'd be working, play a very important role in the overall uh, impact of the MBA experience, right? So that way, it has been really great. The class that I was put in had so much uh, diverse backgrounds when it when it comes to like people where they are coming from, right? And what kind of experiences they've had. And the entire curriculum is designed in a manner that it's more teamwork based approach, okay. right? So you'll be constantly, you'll be put in teams uh, where you'll have very clear deliverables 
uh, and uh, they also make an effort to sort of understand or make you understand that okay how do you manage the team dynamics for me it was a learning curve because uh, again like i am not used to i guess the nuances of the american work culture so right. uh, that was really helpful for me to get primed and understand how it is mm-hmm. and other than that i would say you know there are several industries uh, in the us which are much more mature compared to let's say in india right right and when you're when you're studying here you get good exposure to all of these industries which i think is a very critical point of mba so there are so, so many industries that you might come across that you had you no clue when you're in india Right. Uh, so, for instance, I had an opportunity to work in an electric vehicle uh, company oh, in the US. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes, which would have been really difficult if uh, I was in India. So you get all of this exposure, and I think Yale does a really good job okay. of making sure that you do get that kind of exposure. And other than that, of course, the very fundamental blocks that you'll see in any B school are also here. You have the professional clubs, you have the other clubs. So in terms of activities and everything, it's it's all that. So it has been a fantastic experience for me personally. I think quite a wholesome experience. Yeah. Right. That's nice. So, would you like to tell us more about your job search experience during the MBA, and what mm-hmm. tips will you give to the future candidates? Right. So, for me personally, I had uh, done my internship in Tesla, and then after that, my idea was to move into uh, consulting. So now I will be entering into the consulting space. Uh, we just. wrapped up our full time recruitment that's amazing uh, congratulations oh, thank you. i would say a, a big observation when it comes to recruitment process mm-hmm. in general of course is that uh, it's very different from what we are used to i guess back in india okay. uh, where you have let's say you know somewhere in december final year you have companies coming in right and you give in with everything is structured you will not find that kind of a system here and i would say the outreach that you do Mm-hmm. to understand more about the university that that habit becomes really useful when you're looking for job search all right, right? because mm-hmm. they value people who take the effort to uh, actually understand more about the job it's more people and contact based kind of a system rather than a very mechanical just submit your resume and wait for what happens kind of a system so i would say that was really helpful uh, you spend a considerable amount of time just doing the research reaching out to people trying to understand better what this role entails mm-hmm. and the student clubs and uh, the entire student body does a really good job in helping you with that uh, so for example in your school of management it's a very collaborative process you will never feel that you're actually competing with anyone else because everyone is helping each other that's really uh, nice Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that is one of the critical things that I believe will be useful for anyone who is uh, looking for a uh, you know a good B school experience. Absolutely. So when it comes to what do you expect in in what will happen in this particular roles, what are the different skill set that will be required, mm-hmm. some answering some myths or clearing some myths, all of these things are taken care of by the student body. It's of course up to you to take advantage of these resources. Okay. And after that, you reach out to. the individual organizations try to understand better about the role and then uh, you go forward the application and application prep so that is of course the different thing right and the second stage i would say once you have the interview and by the the actual interview process right so uh, when it comes to the interview process prep the application prep that is we have a rigorous uh, protocol already in place so okay. let's say if you want to get into any of one of the tech companies there is a, a excellent tech club here with great leaders uh, they'll make sure that they imbibe all the necessary skill set what are the questions that might happen okay. and overall it's it's a really a uh, good environment so anything that you would need to prepare for uh, your interviews or anything like that yeah. there are resources available you just have to reach out and take advantage of it sometimes you might even not have to reach out you know people will reach out to you that hey you know i saw that you were present in that particular club would you like help with this like mm-hmm. all right okay that's really interesting so how do you think the entire pre application phase has contributed to your growth yeah so when i specifically talk about the application phase that entire process made me much more comfortable when it comes to doing sort of peer on peer research for any particular thing when it comes to like outreach or trying to know more about anything before taking the first step which is really helpful mm-hmm. if you let's say you do go into the interviews then it's really helpful to know all of this stuff because it shows that you've done the research and it also makes your case more convincing Mm-hmm. uh rather than giving a very generic answer that okay this is why i would like to work so 
Yeah. That exercise, which I did during the process, was definitely helpful. It did prime me for uh, the entire recruitment process. And of course, being more organized and disciplined when it comes to different these kind of applications, that itself is a good learning uh, experience. And the final thing I would say in the application process is the application process will give you good insights about how the American work culture is. Okay. Right. So the things that the recruiter is looking for in your application. Mm -hmm. uh, those similar themes will be repeated when you actually apply for jobs. Okay. So you do get those insights through the application phase and those insights are really helpful later on. So this is something about the application phase, of course, that helped me in the final recruitment process. That's and when it comes to the university itself, I think the first thing obviously is the academic aspect of things, working with other people. You just become more capable of tackling different kinds of problems. You're you're much more ready, basically. You have a different arsenal of toolkits right now under you. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing, of course, is um, uh, the network of students that you have. They themselves uh, will be really good resources. Or they'll help you out right. in terms of navigating what are the different industries, you know, what kind of things that you can expect. Right. Uh, and, of course, uh, the final thing are, are the other resources, such as the uh, professional club or the student clubs, mm -hmm. who will give you much more insights. So you will never walk into a particular industry being completely blind. You will have some information. You will have some insights. You will have some first degree mm -hmm. uh, witness reports, in sense, who have actually worked in those industries. They'll be able to tell you, hey, this is what you can expect. These are the mm -hmm. uh, skill sets required. So I'd say that the combined effect of the application process and uh, the B school uh, can give you a, a lot of things to draw from when it comes to uh, the recruitment process. It's quite inspiring. So, uh, according to you, what are a few common mistakes that all GMAT aspirants and MBA applicants must avoid? So, I think the first error that I see people doing is people are tackling GMAT and in parallel, they're doing the application, right. a big no-no. It's very difficult to handle both. It's a sequential process. It does not have to go parallel. In fact, it's counterproductive if you do it in parallel. Right. That is the first thing I would say. The second thing that I would say is uh, when it comes to writing the essays, I think there is a, there is a, sometimes there is a gap. People don't actually know what the recruiter is uh, or the administration is actually looking for. And as a result, what happens is that, you know, the essay, the thing that you write and your resume don't make sense when they're uh -huh. put together, right? So yeah. let's say your resume might say that you've worked in this particular industry followed by this industry. And in your essay, you're saying that, okay, I want to do something else. And this happens much more frequently than you'd like to admit. And the reason being is just psychological. You, when you're writing your essay, you're in a different mindset. When you're writing a resume, I guess you're in a different mindset. Yes. So I guess that is... That is another thing that I've seen happens quite frequently. And I would say finally, not doing reach out is a big mistake that I've seen people like, you know, they have not done a single reach out to anyone. They have, mm -hmm. because that might hurt them in the interview process. In the interview process, they might ask you very specific questions. Okay, what exactly about this particular university that you like? And it always helps if you've done some sort of a research. Let's say, so in my case, a student told me that there is particular, there's a different kind of practicum courses that put you in life consulting projects with different companies. Now, this is something very difficult to find in the website, but it's, it's, a, very, it's a very useful information to know Absolutely. because it shows that it's not all just you know, theoretical. You are actually put into practice. And that made me much more convinced in my application and was also that also helped me in the interview process saying that, hey, this, these are specifically what I really enjoyed about the school or what really makes sense based on my background mm -hmm. because I don't have a consulting background. So it'll be good for me to actually put those skills to test before I start my job or something like that. Right. Wow. So that is another thing I would say is, is something to watch out for in the application process. Right. Okay. So what would be your final message to all the viewers watching this video? Yeah, sure. So if you're planning to take up this challenge, applying to B school, uh, first thing that I would say is remember to always relax, be calm. It's, it is a sequential process. It's, it's, a, it's more of a marathon. It's not a race. So make sure you are organized and execute all of the steps and definitely take help from professionals. I was fortunate that I had people in Experts Global to help me out. I did not, as I mentioned, I did not manage my time well. So I had a really short time frame to do all the applications and they were really helpful. I wouldn't have been able to do those applications. So I would say definitely reach out, take help and make sure that you are 
not too stressed or don't get anxious. Everything good is going to happen if you just stay organized and keep proceeding as as per you know what we've discussed here. Yeah, I think all's well that ends well. Thank you yeah. so much for giving your suggestions and also sharing your story yeah. with us. We look forward to knowing more about your success stories in the near future as well. So uh, all yeah. the very best, and thank you for giving us your time. Uh, happy to be here and happy to help. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care. Take yeah. care. Bye bye.